Hey guys, John here. Welcome to the course, How to Use Harmer. So this video is going to be kind of a brief introduction and kind of showing uh, different parts of the synth, what's all, what it's all about, why it's so cool, also why it's so different. And as you can see on the screen, I got the typical spectrum analyzer here, an oscilloscope here, I brought down the EQ. It's kind of the same view as this uh, as a spectrum here, but I thought, you know, it's kind of weird not to have space here so I might as well put that here and then you might be wondering what's this little empty spot here well if you're not familiar with it if you open up Harmer this little arrow here let's click this twice to kind of open this up and this is going to be a spectral display section as it's so written here so if we press a note we can kind of see that this is kind of doing the same thing as this and this down here but this is a little different because this isn't actually audio this is actually data so Without further ado, let's kind of get started into it. So why is Harmer so cool? Well, there's a couple things. One of the first things I think is a very interesting idea is that Harmer doesn't necessarily create audio first. It creates the data first, and then that gets transferred into audio later. So it's a kind of a different process. And then they call it a additive subtractive synthesis where subtractive, as if you're already familiar, you're kind of sculpting away sound. You have like a rich kind of sound a lot, or sound away form with a lot of harmonics or partials. And you kind of just sculpt it with filters and maybe some other effects or phase kind of who knows what, but you're kind of like molding it out of a lot of stuff. Where additive, you're kind of adding on different harmonics, different partials to kind of create that sound. So this kind of does it in a, in a strange way, but in a both way, where you can add different harmonics, add different uh, partials and all kind of things like that. So this interface, when you first look at it, or if you've kind of looked at it before and you're like, oh my God, there's a lot going on here. Where do I even start? And it kind of does give off that vibe because yes, there is a lot going on here. And a lot of the knobs and buttons are kind of hard to figure out at first. So the way I've kind of planned this course is that it's going to be a, a bi-weekly thing. So we're going to have two videos a week going in depth to each section, and that'll give you time to ask questions. And then maybe in the next video, we can answer them or work through them together and all that. So a brief overview of this synth here. So up here on the top is kind of where we have our oscillators where it says timbre, kind of the timbre of the sound and where it sound generates from where it starts from. So as you'll notice here, we have a selector between a saw wave and a square wave, which are, as you know, very rich in harmonics. And if we just play this, we just have our standard saw. And then you can go to the right here. And then we have our square, which is all the uh, all the odd harmonics. An easy way to remember that is squares are odd. Like, you know, if you're weird, you're odd, you're square. That's how I remember. It's kind of weird, but hopefully you never forget it based on that analogy. And then you have different sub sliders here. So if you're heavy, heavily filtering your sound and you don't want to lose the low end of the harmonic, you can kind of engage some of these sliders here to protect, as you see, the pro to protect your uh, your fundamental frequency. So you can do a lot of crazy stuff, but you can still hold that bottom end solid. And then moving on here, generally we go to the filter next, and this has two filters. And the cool part about this filter, kind of different from a lot of other ones, is for example you can run these in a lot of different ways you can run them in series you can run them in parallel you have a lot of shapes you can pick from and a really cool part too is you have two custom shapes so you can literally draw your own filter however you want it which is a really cool idea so you you click on this and you go to your envelope and you can you draw your own uh your own curve so if right now it's kind of just not really working because everything's up but if i drag this point all the way down it's kind of like a, a low pass and then you can ch adjust the curve and really make a steep curve and then you can customize it however you want which i think is a really cool idea to draw your own filters it's kind of revolutionary even though this synth is actually quite old so it still stands up to its time which is really awesome and then uh, you have your standard controls with with your width as far as like how big that uh that frequency is there that cutoff area is how much it affects and then moving on, we have our standard resonance is, is pretty standard, like I just said. But the cool part is, is like under this menu, you have different types of shapes for that resonance, which is kind of interesting to to think about, because generally you think like resonance, okay, that's generally the the spot where the uh, where the cutoff starts, cut or the filter starts cutting it off, and you kind of accentuate that little spot there, and that's the resonance. But generally, it's kind of one type of shape that's tied to that, uh, to that cutoff. And, but here, there's a lot of different shapes to play with. And then over here, what's kind of interesting too is this is OFS, so it's offset. So generally with the resonance, it's kind of t 
high it's married together with the low pass or high pass filter it's, it's it's married to that spot but with this offset you can move it around wherever you want to and then with this osc it's kind of like a self oscillating oscillator it's a weird way to say it but basically it, it becomes another oscillator that you can add to your your filter which we will go all into depth with all of this uh when the filter video comes but that's just kind of a brief overview of that and then you have another filter at the bottom that's basically the same as the one at the top it's just kind of mirrored and this center knob will determine if you want just filter one just filter two or a mix between the two parallel you name it so on and so forth and then another cool feature is this prism knob here so this it has a very weird sound so this is a little quick demonstration And you can see how these these harmonics are just doing weird, weird stuff. And there's a lot of cool options. I know it's uh, it's kind of a strange sound. You're like, why would I want to use Prism? I mean, it's a cool, weird sound, but it's like, okay, what's, what's it good for? And we're, we're going to have a whole specific video just dedicated just to this feature. So stay tuned for that one. And then you get the harmonizer coming up next, and that's kind of telling harmer which which partials or which harmonics actually to accentuate, which ones to bring up, how many do you want to have in there. And kind of a, it's kind of a cool idea if you really want like a quick like a power chord or I don't know d depending on what you want. And then your standard unison you got up to nine here as well, some different types of blending modes. And then you get your pan, pitch, kind of standard stuff in your phase. And then moving on, um, your standard pitch, which is this is going to be like the ratio, kind of how you think how citrus is, where it's multiplied, you know. So if you ever let's do a default real quick here, so. Uh, if you want to like, drop it down an octave, you, you drop that here or put, put divide this, cut it in half so it's half the frequency, so it's an octave down. And then same thing for going up. So, and we'll get into depth because this is kind of a weird way if you've never really messed with ratios before. It's kind of a strange way to uh, to adjust the pitch. And then there's the detune here at the bottom for smaller little moves. Then you got a little vibrato over here, which, yes, you can make those easily with, with an LFO and, and whatnot, but it's kind of nice to have it just a dedicated vibrato section there to use whenever you want to. And then moving on, we have the pluck. And this pluck is actually very cool because we would think as a pluck, like, okay, so you're just decaying the harmonics or the partials at a faster rate, like a, like a quick envelope. And yes, that's true. That is very true. But the cool part about this one is you can get into the into the decay of different partials or different harmonics of your sound and you can tell like the higher frequencies to decay slower or maybe some mid harmonics to decay faster it's really up to you so you can really customize how fast your partials decay with harmer your harmonics which is interesting in the name itself but there's a lot of control with the individual harmonics that you can have in this synth which makes it really 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 cool and then there's this dedicated phaser here, which has a lot of cool options and a lot of presets you can kind of mess around with. And you can also draw your own shapes in an envelope. More control right there, so it's really interesting as well. You have your global EQ here, which there's also a local EQ, which we will talk about later on. And then you have your graph for line editor, which is kind of similar if you're familiar with Citrus or some other line editors, kind of general in FL Studio. It's very similar with the different types of curves you have and the different... Uh, offset for the uh for the envelopes here the on and off you know the the pencil the magnet for for tempo locking your sliding freezing all those standard options which which is the same concept as it is in citrus and then up here these drop down lists is it's kind of like how citrus has it tabbed out this is going to say like okay what uh what what articulator do we have like we have our our panning right and then you can say envelope i want to use an envelope to make a i don't know let's draw something kind of weird so just with that quick drawing, you can you can automate the panning, right? We're just using an envelope, or you can use an LFO, or you can use your different mappings, modulation X, Y, Z, which, uh, speaking of the modulation, you have three of them, whereas in Citrus you have two, so you have an extra one here. So I have your X, left and right, your Y up and down, and your Z forward and backwards. So it's kind of cool to have another extra one there. And then moving on to the next tab, we have an image tab. And this is also another cool thing. This whole synth is actually just really cool. You can draw or drop in a picture or uh, some text as a picture. And then your picture will play. It'll tell a harmer which harmonics or partials there, there should be on or should be off. And you can basically synthesize what your face looks like or your logo or something like that. Or you could even 
make a logo or your name or something in your song and put it way high up in the spectrum for a certain spot at the time and kind of watermark your own song, which is kind of a cool idea. And then you can also do resynthesis, which is a whole nother topic that we'll get into. But essentially, you can get a recording or a sample of your voice or whatever and drop it into Harmer, and it'll calculate the audio and recreate that as data. So it's not audio. It, it's basically saying we're finding all the different sine waves at all the different pitches and phases, and then we're going to recreate that, which gives you a lossless version to mess around with. And then once you have that, you can do all the different effects that Harmer has, all the unison, all the effects, all the knob. It, it's, you can kind of go crazy within the synth. And then moving on, we have our standard effects, which is kind of cool. This is all built in. You have your distortion with a lot of different types of distortion, a lot of different sliders. You got your delay, then you got your chorus, also with a lot of presets as well that you can play around with. And then reverb as well, also presets. And then you got a compression, which is kind of nice because there, I, I do really, I'm kind of more partial, a little funny joke there. I'm also a little partial to synths that have a built-in compressor in it because I think it's just convenient. I don't know why every synth doesn't have it, but you can't have everything in this world that you want. But it's very cool that they added that in there and there's different cuts of presets, like how hard you want to compress it and your mount, your uh, little three bands here, low, mid, and high, uh, which is very nice. So moving on to the advanced tab. So this is obviously advanced. It's not really too advanced, but we'll go into this. You can change the order of different types of things. So if you want filter one to go backwards up in two, you can change your phaser. I'm just putting my mouse over this and scrolling my wheel. And you can kind of reorder how you want things to go. So if you want your pluck at the very top, you can have that and really do as, as your heart's content. And so back to our envelope here, there's a global section here. So there's a strum thing, which is kind of cool. It kind of gives you that strumming effect. So if you, if you play a chord, this is selected on up. So it'll play like the higher notes first and it kind of cascades down and you go down here, alter goes back and forth and a random version. We'll get into that, but it's a, it's a pretty cool feature. You got your legato, your porta, or your slide portamento, pre-post effects. You got your main pitch right here, which is another pitch than it is right here. We'll get into that later. Uh, and then with all this I've just said, you also have an entirely another part. So part B, which is a whole new harmer. So it's kind of like two harmers in one. And then with these knobs here, so this is on for A and this is off for B. So if you want both of them on, there you go. You have A and B are both on and this little slider is kind of a mix between the two of crossfades between the, uh, the both parts of it. And if you want to link stuff together, so if you want to change the, you know, the cutoff frequency of both parts, you click this link icon here, and then both parts will have the same, uh, same value. So if I unlink this, put this all the way back at the top, then now they're different. So that's uh, how that kind of works in a nutshell. So I think I covered most of just the overview of the synth. This video isn't too in-depth. This is kind of just showing you what the synth has to offer and... Uh, as it progresses, we're going to go through more things. So if there's any questions or if there's something that's confusing you, please drop it in the comment or let me know so I can kind of put together maybe a list or something like that so we can uh, address those in the next videos as well. And with that being said, thank you for watching this video. The next one in the series, we're going to be going over this whole Tamar section, so covering all of this section right here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.